In the world of competitive sport, competition drives us to push our limits and strive for greatness. But with every high stake game, the temptation to take shortcuts and cheat follows. Minecraft speedrunning is no exception. With thousands of new players flocking the leaderboard each year, it's no surprise that cheating scandals have become so normalized. From splicing the game footage to changing the game code, the race to be the best can quickly take a dangerous turn. In this video, we will delve into several of the cheating scandals that shook the community to find out just how they thought they could cheat and get away with it. I really hope you enjoy. Our story begins in mid-2020. Speedrunning was just gaining traction as Dream's popularity introduced thousands to the concept of speedrunning Minecraft. The new Nether update had changed speedrunning majorly as the introduction of palin bothering, room portals and nether biomes forced runners to change up their game. As one can imagine, all of these people saw speedrunning as a competitive way to challenge their mechanical skill and game knowledge. And the ultimate achievement in speedrunning was to obtain the world record in the category of 1.16 random seed glitchless. In the random seed category, the act of obtaining a world record is the accumulation of hundreds of hours of practice and actual running. The random in random seed is quite literal, as any seed you play is a random world you've never seen before. Any event you're met with in the world is also random, such as how many iron and iron golem drops to how fast your dragon purchase at the end of the game. When you think about it, it's really just impossible to predict what will happen in a run until you've actually ran it. Well, that is unless you've somehow scouted the seed beforehand and are now playing what is known as a set seed. This is the runner Dren, a speedrunner who in mid-2020 uploaded a new personal best. Their first one in fact, something that isn't anything out of the ordinary. The only strange thing was, this was a world record by an astonishing 2 minutes. A 1919. Dream's run was in fact the first time someone has ever beaten Minecraft in the RSG category in under 20 minutes. And as one can imagine, this shocked everyone. The only problem was, no one really knew who Dream was, and this raised some immediate flags for the top runners and community members watching. So let's take a closer look and see what they found. When analyzing any run to figure out if the runner is cheating or not, there are a few key mistakes that the runner needs to make for it to be suspicious. And one of these is incorrect decision making. Drem made three different errors that heavily impacted the legitimacy of his run. And the first one came surprisingly early in the run. Drem had just obtained tools and some supplies from a room portal and would at this point be looking for a village. His immediate action should be to look at either this section on the screen or this, as collecting information about a possible village should be done immediately after obtaining tools. However, watch how fast Drem reacts to the shipwreck appearing on his screen. It takes him approximately 17 frames or less than a second to react to seeing the shipwreck on the edge of his screen, showing us the viewers that his attention was on something completely different from what one should expect. The next error in Drem's gameplay was a minor one, but equally as confusing for top runners. Drem would, in the entire time he spent in another, never collect any information about where he was. After trading with some piglins and obtaining his pearls, he ran straight for a random hill that led him to a blaze spawner. A few blaze kills later, it was finally time to leave. Again, never really looking around him for information, he beelined directly for the nether portal to leave the nether. This disregard to collecting information despite his perfect navigation of the nether was strike two for the top runners. The last straw and the most outrageous in the run itself came when it was finally time to throw his eyes of ender. These items will always point towards the center of the chunk stronghold generates in. One often has to throw three or more of these eyes to locate this chunk, using a technique known as triangulation. Throwing his first eye, Drem found the general location of this chunk. The trip itself lasted for around 5 minutes in which he would obtain some beds from the village and at around 1450 he threw his second eye, this time to find out if the angle of the first eye had changed. Drem's next action would stump even the most experienced runners, as he would not locate the chunk in which the eye was thrown at, but run away from it and dig in a random spot a few chunks from the right of where the eye was pointing. A few blocks mined later and he landed straight in a mineshaft with some stone bricks in it. 
Exposed underneath these bricks was the portal room. This was the final straw, as such an outcome was highly unlikely and seemingly impossible under legitimate circumstances. But wait, there's more. Drem's mistakes didn't just center around the run itself, but what happened before it too. You see, in Minecraft, a seed is unique. From the trees, oceans, and mountains, a seed's uniqueness comes from Minecraft's own generation code. And one of the things that Mojang just so happened to add to the game was a generation screen that popped up every time someone loaded up a seed. This generation animation is also specific towards the seed, meaning that if you load into it that specific seed, the animation shown to the player will always be the same. However, in Drem's case, the seed he played and the seed shown on screen was not the same seed. His seed generated like this, with the center of the square forming in the middle of the screen. But if you look at the seed he provided, it starts in the bottom left and shows a totally different generation pattern. This was the finity proof that Drem had spliced his recording to make it seem like he was playing the seed for the first time ever. Drem's attempt at a cheated world record was the first high profile cheating attempt in Minecraft speedrunning. Videos covering the topic reached millions of views, showing just how popular Minecraft speedrunning was becoming. As the months rolled by, Minecraft speedrunning experienced a massive boom. Many of the newer community members were figuring out and cracking the code on how to speedrun the game, and the goal was to reduce the amount of RNG you needed to consistently beat the game. Strats such as Bastion Routes and Blaze Bedding became a lot more familiar to the wider mainstream community. However, for some, this wasn't enough. The amount of time and dedication it took to get the required RNG to complete a run made speedrunning bad content on stream. What followed next was one of the biggest controversies in Minecraft speedrunning history. It all started in mid-October of 2020. One particular speedrunner started watching Dream speedrun on Twitch and quickly noticed an oddity. Dream would get abnormally lucky when it came to pearl trades. But how lucky exactly? Well, he found out that out of 262 trades, Dream got 42 ender pearl trades. Knowing that each of these pearl trades had a 4.73% chance of happening, the chance of Dream obtaining these trades was 1 in 177 billion. Compared to top speedrunners at the time, the odds were just too significant to be expected from an unedited version of Minecraft. The conclusion? Dream cheated. The general consensus was that Dream had an illegal data pack or that he had changed the Minecraft code to make Pearl trades more favorable. After looking into Dream's runs even more, investigators found Dream's rod rates to also be increased. Fast forward two months and the speedrun moderators had their verdict. The findings were published in a video made by the Minecraft speedrun moderation team followed up by a 29 page document where they explained their findings and the complex math behind it. They concluded that the odds of Dream obtaining the combined odds of pearls and blaze rods was 1 in 7.5 trillion. Following the mod's public announcement of Dream's cheating, a lot of public attention was drawn to the situation. Dream's status on YouTube and the controversy that him cheating meant for his reputation drew in a lot of interest from multiple parties. So how did Dream himself react to all of this? His reputation was in shambles. With millions of people waiting for his response, Dream had a lot to answer for. The main premise of the response video was Dream's attempt at disproving the math used by the Minecraft moderators. His argument was that the math they had used had a clear bias towards cherry picking the data and that the actual odds of him being that lucky was a lot lower than what they stated. But how did he come to that conclusion? Well, he did what any reasonable person would do, hire a professional statistician and a practicing astrophysicist to prove it for him. The paper itself was quite convoluted, but it included more info about Dream's total runs on stream, along with some new mathematical models. The conclusion they came up with was that if 100,000 people stream Minecraft at the same time, there would be a 1 in 100 million chance they would get Dream's luck. Unfortunately, the mass used in the paper would quickly be broken apart, discrediting Dream's main argument, and the speedo moderator's verdict would stand. Dream had modified his game to obtain his luck. 
So where did that leave Dream exactly? Well, having exhausted his resources, he will continue to deny having any knowledge or intention to cheat, and would even accuse the mods of being unprofessional. At the same time, I and many others fail to see what he would gain from such erratic and defensive behavior. He would take interviews with other content creators and explain to multiple people in private that he never actually cheated. So there's been some controversy surrounding the legitimacy of one specific speedrunning record that you set with people claiming that you, you know, maliciously hacked the game to give you a competitive edge. So to have a better understanding of why Dream acted the way he did, I think it's important to look at him as a content creator. In his response video, he had this to say. I'm not that good at math, and I'm sure a lot of you watching this may not be either, so I found somebody who is amazing at math and specializes in probability to help get to the bottom of it. Well, math wasn't the only thing Dream lacked skill in. Another thing he would do was outsource his mods to developers who had the skill and capability to help him make his videos more entertaining. In this instance, he would hire a particular developer with the sole purpose of making his Minecraft experience better for content creation. This included increasing game performance and much more. But unfortunately for Dream, this developer had also modified his Pearl and Blaze drops. Now, this by itself isn't really a bad thing. The version Dream usually plays on has lower Pearl rates and you would oftentimes find yourself never getting any at all. So for the sake of content creation, increasing this is a good thing. What the developer failed to mention and what Dream would be ignorant about was that this increased luck would carry over to his single player speedruns, thus giving him the incredible odds he experienced. Not knowing he was cheating, his frustrated and defensive attitude makes sense. And after he apologized to the people he affected in private, he left the Minecraft speedrunning community for good. It's now 2021, and a full 7 months after Dream's cheating scandal, and the Minecraft speedrunning scene was as vibrant as ever. Strats such as Hypermodern revolutionized everything about how we approach the game, and thousands of new ambitious runners tried their hand at speedrunning Minecraft. The hobby of speedrunning had reached such a potential that many videos covering the topic reached into the millions, and such relevancy and monetary gain was one of the reasons why many thought of speedrunning as more than just a hobby. Runners such as Feinberg, Curway, and Illumina all gained a huge following of their skill, and a thought of gaining all of that could be too alluring for some. One such player would start speedrunning Minecraft in this period and quickly build themselves a portfolio of some impressive PBs. For months, they would run and compete with top speedrunners and truly be an integrated and well-respected member of the community. This player was Slowby, but sadly for the community, all of these runs were built on a mountain of lies and deceit. Remember when I mentioned that bad decision making can heavily impact the legitimacy of your run? Well, that is because Minecraft as a game is all about making decisions. In speedrunning, especially at a top level, the choices that you have to make in a run are even more streamlined, and are ultimately decided by the current meta during that time period. So it would come to no one's surprise that when you take a closer look at Floby's runs, you're met with an incredible amount of confusing and straight up incorrect decisions that no top runner would make. The first run that was heavily scrutinized was probably the most high profile run in Floby's portfolio. A world record blind and a portal room enter of 820. In simple terms, a blind is referred to as when you exit the nether using an obsidian portal. In a perfect world, this portal would place you closer to the stronghold. So getting the fastest blind ever at the time is a huge accomplishment. Unfortunately for Floby, this record would not stand for long. It doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, I can see that being quite questionable. So what exactly did she do to make top runners suspicious? Well, this is a reset macro. It's made to input certain clicks in quick succession to give an easier way to reset worlds for speedrunners. Now listen to Floby's macro. Did you catch that? Let me slow it down for you right there. Well, this was a splice and two extra clicks than necessary. If you take a closer look at the audio of these actions, 
you can see them right there. Floby had modified their macro to have a few extra steps that included clicking the more world options twice to open the settings, insert a set seed and close them again, thus the two extra clicks. And the run itself was also quite odd. Spawning in, Floby immediately headed straight for a shipwreck that had 10 iron in it. After making iron tools and a bucket, you the viewer are met with the first gameplay error. Floby had just used up all of their iron, leaving none for flint and steel. Now there is a room portal quite close by that Floby saw that could either have a flint and steel or iron nuggets in it, but taking the risk of not getting either is completely wrong. Well, unless you knew you would get a flint and steel from the room portal in the first place. The run would get even more suspicious in the nether. If there was any run to compare it to, it would be that it was quite similar to Drem's nether. This was because Floby would literally never look where she was going. For example, after figuring out the direction of the Bastion, Floby's next objective, as with any speedrunner, is to spend the entire time trying to locate the fortress. But Floby deviates from this and instead runs straight for the Bastion, never once actually trying to look for the fortress. Compared to other more legitimate attempts on stream, you can clearly see the discrepancy between the two forms of gameplay. As he's boating down, he's looking around at this area and this area, abusing planar fog to try to find a fortress. Fast forward a bit, and Floby was now done with the Bastion. The next step would be to find a fortress that she never actually looked for. Luckily for Floby, this was quite easy. You could simply chuck a pearl in this direction, and after a bit of running, she arrived at objective number two. This is where Floby would make error number three. Floby had several different directions that she could go to. Going right would lead to nowhere, so that's immediately a dud. So that would mean you should go to the left. Luckily, this path leads straight to Blazeborner, so navigating that way is 100% correct. Well, Floby would do choice number three, running straight through a crimson forest and find the hidden Blazeborner. Now this could have been luck, but Floby never actually tried to collect any information when getting there, once again reaffirming our beliefs that she knew information that she shouldn't have known. A few blaze kills later and it was finally time to get the infamous world record blind. This was the mistake number 4. After obtaining the rods needed to blind, she wouldn't build the portal where one should expect. Instead, she ran straight up to the spawner again and built it in this location. Top runners figured that this was because Floby had overcommitted to a predetermined route, and that building the portal in that exact location was muscle memory at that point. So, Floby had finally arrived at the stronghold after traveling for quite a bit. She entered it and would at this point be heading straight to the starter staircase. This is because end portal rooms will usually generate 5 to 8 rooms from this staircase. But instead, Floby would look around in a random fireway before spotting the portal room. Did you spot it? Here it is, a bit slower. This is mistake number 5. Despite the portal room only being visible for a few frames, Floby had hard committed to running straight for it, as if she knew where it was from the beginning. Now this run wasn't the only run Floby cheated though. She would cheat numerous top times over several months, all in order to fabricate credibility and a reputation of being one of the best. Sadly for Floby, the attentive top runners quickly took note of the numerous errors that littered each run. The final verdict? Floby's runs were illegitimate and the Minecraft speedrunning community pressured Floby to confess to cheating. Faced with reality, she confessed to splicing and seed ejecting. But why? Why would someone go to such lengths to cheat multiple PBs and even a world record? Would the risk of dragging your reputation down the drain be worth it? In an interview between Floby and the Minecraft commentator and British speedrunner Fulham, their main reason for cheating stemmed from needing money. Their main intent was to cheat runs to gain credibility and recognition and then build a brand off of that. Unfortunately, after cheating a 1259, they saw that the fame never really arrived, making them cheat and splice even more runs. This snowballed into the infamous blind roll record, being the final nail in the coffin for Floby's speedrunning career. Alas, this is not the end of our story. What if I told you that there was one cheater who had cheated for years before Floby, Dream and even Drem? 
a cheater hidden in plain sight that through the use of his skills would build a reputation of being one of the world's best, with multiple world records and top times under their belt. This was Minecraftenger, and this is how he got caught. Minecraftenger had humble beginnings in the community as he started speedrunning in 2020 before the community's rise in popularity. He first started speedrunning with his brother Nice Twice doing duo speedruns. These two runners would compete together and gain several world records. Another thing Microventor was, was observant. Remember the person I mentioned back when talking about Dream's incredible luck? One particular speedrunner started watching Dream speedrun on Twitch and quickly noticed an oddity. Dream would get abnormally lucky when it came to pearl trades. Well, that was a Minecraftenter. His contribution, combined with a humble attitude, meant that many liked him as a runner. This would be furthered by his stubborn attitude when it came to speedrunning. The favorite category that he liked to run was Set Seed, which, while it doesn't pose as many random events as Random Seed, it is a challenging and tedious category to speedrun. His journey in solo speedruns began in the 1.144 category, speedrunning on a desert seed. The main hurdle of this seed was twofold. The first was loot in blacksmith chests, which would be randomized each time you generated the seed, meaning that the chance of obtaining enough obsidian to complete a run was extremely unlikely. The second was the dragon perch. The dragon also wouldn't perch each run, so even if you got to the end in the first place, getting a fast enough perch wasn't guaranteed. After first obtaining a 3.15, he lowered his time to a 3.08 and then a 2.56, the first ever sub 3. At the time, this was an incredible accomplishment that gave Minecraftenture a considerable boost in reputation among this community. Fast forward a few months and the community found a new seed on the version 1.16. This seed, nicknamed the Dolphin Seed, allowed Microvenger's skill to bloom even more. He quickly dropped his time down to a 221. Throughout this grind session, Microvenger would obtain multiple world records, a feat that any player should feel proud and accomplished for obtaining. Sadly, Microvenger had nothing to be proud of. This was because he had cheated to obtain these times. So how exactly did he do it? First, I want to show you this nether section of his sub-3 run, the 256. In this part, Minecraftenger has to perform a bed clutch and quickly build himself a nether portal to exit the nether. This will put him directly in the portal room, but did you notice the splice? Let's rewind a bit. Right there. As Minecraftenger was building his nether portal, something impossible happened. The splash text for obsidian suddenly pops up. Now this typically happens when you switch items by scrolling, and it will only stay on screen for a few seconds before vanishing. So why did it appear even though he never actually scrolled? Well, this was a splice. Microvenger had made a save state at that exact moment and would load up a new save state every time the dragon didn't perch. You could see that spice in the form of the obsidian text, but Microvenger's cheating wouldn't just stop there. He had also manipulated another RNG section of the set seed runs, the dragon fights. To explain how exactly he did it, I first have to show you the perch he got in his 221 world record. Now this doesn't really give you much information if you know nothing about the ender dragon, so let's get that out of the way first. This is an ender dragon. It's a mob programmed to circle around several points or nodes in the end dimension and will always go from point A to point B. This means that the dragon's movements can be easily proven possible or not based on these patterns. But what does that have to do with Microranger's perch? Well, one of the things that the dragon can't do is to perch at certain times. The dragon can only attempt to perch once it's 30 blocks above a node opposite of the player. What you need to understand is that this takes time. That time in a set seed run means a lot. So what would happen if you extended this 30 block limit? Well, this is exactly what Microvenger did. By getting a perch that was 31.6 blocks above the node. 
a slight and minuscule difference, but definitive proof that Minecraft Avenger had modified his game. Now, at the time, back in 2020, this couldn't be explained, but there was always this confusion behind how one could replicate it. Strat developers and runners simply thought that their understanding of the game code and how the dragon behave was insufficient. They thought that it was something along the lines of one in a few million. Fortunately, after extensive research into the topic, this luck was not something one could obtain legitimately. The conclusion, you could only get this perch by modifying the dragon's mechanics. After feeling content with Set Seed, Mike Avenger began his random sea journey. His first PB was at 2247, obtained in November of 2020. This run was well respected for the time period, but Micromanger would cheat this one too. You can clearly see it as he loads up a new world. The mouse jumps slightly and his timer goes from 0 to 13 minutes. Now in hindsight, it's quite strange that this splice was never caught by verifiers. Still, it did and Micro Avenger would continue his deceitful career of cheating runs. During this period of 2020 and 2022, Micro Avenger would build himself quite an impressive amount of runs. He decided to try out pre 1.9 set seed as well, and even continued to lower his random seed times down to a sub 10. Micro Avenger was clearly at the top of the cheating game, and no one knew it. Unfortunately, this is where Micro Avenger made a huge mistake. He will try out the category 115 set seed on stream. This category is quite similar to the 1.14 poor one, meaning that as a speedrunner, you have to reset hundreds of times before actually getting enough obsidian to complete a run. Many saw this category as a marathon grind, as you simply couldn't consistently get world record attempts. Luckily, Minecraft Avenger had one more skill up his sleeve. He was a coder and had multiple years of knowledge behind him so modifying loot was something he could easily do. This was the final straw for Micro Avengers' arrogant and blatant cheating career. He would stream his attempts in front of multiple runners. Now, typically this wasn't a problem, but imagine if one of those viewers noticed Micro Avengers' unusually good obsidian luck and decided to take a closer look. To figure out if Micro Avenger had cheated or not by changing loot, you first have to figure out if the loot itself is generatable. By simulating each 2 to the power of 48 different types of chest loot, you could prove with 100% certainty if the chest he had gotten was the chest he could get. And after checking the first chest off the stream, they had their proof. The chest loot he had obtained was 100% something he couldn't have gotten in vanilla Minecraft. The conclusion? He had cheated. With this new knowledge at hand, they started looking into every run he'd played and found the breadcrumbs of clues he had left behind in his speedrunning journey. The splice in the 2247 and 256, the impossible perch that now made a bit more sense, and even more impossible chest loot in the 1.144 set seat category. Each run he had on the boards would be removed, and Micro Avenger would be faced with a single choice. Come clean and confess. In the confession video, Micro Avenger would explain his reasoning behind his repeated and systematic cheating. He had a few reasons, like it being easy to cheat, and that he combined his love for Minecraft with coding by cheating. He even went as far as to confess to changing more RNG factors, such as the dolphin always spawning on the dolphin seat. Drem, Dream, Floby, and now Minecraft Render. Four infamous cheaters, but not the only ones. Cheaters have always had a way of popping up in every competitive hobby or sport. Even while recording this video, two separate incidences of cheating appeared in the Minecraft speedrunning community alone. I think it's important to take note that while cheating can't be eradicated, it can be used to educate newer players of the consequences behind what will happen if you cheat to gain an advantage. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.